Yes, yes. I know what you guys are all thinking. LiDAR really sounds like Liger. LiDAR is not just a stupid name, guys. LiDAR is actually an amazing technology. A technology that might actually exist within your household today. There is so much potential for LiDAR. So in this video, we're going to talk about what these consumer applications are, what it might mean for you as an investment, and how it might fit in your portfolio. So if this is the type of video you've been looking for, please hit that like button for me. And let's get started. LiDAR uses light waves. With lasers, scanners, and GPS, it can essentially create mappings, geographical mappings, with incredible accuracy for density, for distance, mapping out objects without violating privacy issues. There are a lot of applications for this. There are essentially two buckets of LiDAR technology. One is for you know technology where you need to create mappings of something that's really, really far away from you. And the second bucket is using LiDAR as a technology to map something that is close. With those two considerations, you essentially have two very distinct approaches in using LiDAR. One is using LiDAR to, for example, map out an entire rainforest. This is actually really famous, and I found out about LiDAR through listening to Joe Rogan, where they were talking about mapping out the Amazon forest, this dense forest. Using LiDAR, they can figure out the uh, ancient structures, human-made structures underneath the forest canopies, something that we couldn't have done before. That is amazing technology, right? But if you think about the consumer side of things, as opposed to the geological side of things, uh, we're basically leveraging LiDAR technology to create automated driving. Almost all smart or self-driving cars are leveraging LiDAR to uh, create intelligence for the car to allow it to self-drive. So again, using laser waves, you can figure out the distance of objects, you can figure out the movement of objects in a very, very quick and efficient way. With that information, you can build intelligence for your car to maneuver around it, uh, stop, et cetera, et cetera. The biggest proponent against LiDAR is Elon Musk, ironically, because he thinks that uh, camera technology can do just fine. Now, the thing that's worth highlighting here is that when Elon Musk said that, it was a while ago. LiDAR technology has come a long way. Back then, you know, if you want to buy LiDAR technology, that would cost you like $75,000 per unit. But now it is much, much cheaper. I anticipate that Elon Musk himself may potentially start using LiDAR. The only real problem is that their team has already rolled so much code against using a re regular camera to do detections. I think they might have uh, you know, spent, spent too much in too deep to switch technologies. If he actually chooses to switch to LiDAR, this technology is gonna blow up because our investment world as it stands today, it's all about hype. It's all about who's talking about what. You notice a stupid Dogecoin, for example, Elon Musk mentions it, the stupid thing jumps up. Even the founder of Dogecoin says it's stupid, guys. Dogecoin was made to prove a point, but now it's worth billions of dollars. You know how stupid that is? Anyway, I digress. So with all said and done, there are three companies, in my opinion, that's worth your attention. One is Velodyne, who is run by the guy who invented LiDAR. And then there is uh, Luminar, which is a company that invented a different version of LiDAR. So imagine Velotine's expertise is 360 degrees LiDAR detection. Luminar's technology allows you to do 120 degrees of detection. You might think that that's actually more efficient for cars. It may potentially be true depending on how the cars are built, right? So those are two amazing companies that you should take into consideration. One hesitation that you might take into consideration about Luminar is that I can't seem to find any financial information about them versus uh, Velodyne their financials are public and you can see a lot of contracts you can also see companies like toyota volvo waymo uber a lot of them uses Velodyne technology apple themselves have played around with Velodyne technology that is actually the pony i'm betting on if you know more about this please let the 11 collective know 
but this is my approach. I'm betting on more certainty than this thing that looks really great, but I'm not really sure if it performs as it's. The third company that's worthwhile in this particular space is uh, Seagrow. Uh, it's an Israeli LiDAR company. My hesitation about this company is, if you know about me already, I avoid any company that's uh, funded by SoftBank because they have this blanketed approach of, okay, this is a really hot space that I wanna be a part of, so I'm gonna find a nearest competitor that is willing to take my shit ton of money and see if I can use that to scale up. SoftBank is kind of, at least in my opinion, they're really, really famous for doing this. They did this with the Facebook competitor, Ren Ren. They did it with Uber. They did it with rental space. They did it with the travel space. I mean, like, the, the <laughs> it can go on and on. But um, yeah, I just don't really believe in that approach in business. And I have yet to see an investment opportunity that's funded by SoftBank that has been as successful as I want it to be. Now I mentioned that there's two buckets of LiDAR technology. One is for uh, using LiDAR to detect very, very far away distanced objects, which is this car technology I've been talking about. The second bit is very close. So a very trimmed down version of LiDAR is in your phone today. And it's leveraged to help your camera figure out the distance of objects, most likely create that bokeh effect. I can imagine you know, a lot of different awesome software written with the help of this technology. Furthermore, Apple has announced that they're gonna work on the Apple Glass, and the only way for them to really truly avoid all of these privacy issues that Google Glass ran into is with LiDAR, because it can detect what's in front of it, right? It can uh, understand what the object is, without violating privacy because it's not a camera. It cannot see, it cannot record with LiDAR like a camera would. So taking all of these into consideration, this is another reason why LiDAR is an important upcoming technology for us consumers. So with this frame of reference, there are three companies that's worth looking at. You have Lumentum, you have this company called MKS Instruments, and you have this weird ass company that's two five what Fajita. is this two six incorporated they make semiconductors they make this technology amongst other things they actually employ twenty two thousand people that company is legit i mean looking at uh wiki they've made 2.38 billion dollars in 2020 so they're a legitimate conglomerate that makes a shit ton of money, has a lot of legitimacy. That being said, Lumentum is a company that Apple works with today for their iPhone products. So that is a safer bet, I think. That is not to say there aren't challenges though, because Lumentum started trying to acquire this company called Coherent, and everyone thought it was great news because it is a very crucial technology. But then both MKS Instruments and 2.6 started making biddings and now there's a bidding war. Lumentum might lose that bid. They're bidding so much more money. This is problematic because during a bidding war, the only person that truly wins is the person that's getting bidded on. But what is the short-term gain here? Well, the fact that Apple is about to have a conference soon, I think that is the short-term gain here. If Apple announces the release of Apple Glass with a timeline, or if Apple announces the launch of Apple Cars formally, I think that's gonna send this entire industry up because people are just gonna be gambling and bidding. That's gonna drive the industry up. But the risk also is that if Apple actually announces whom, then everyone else gets fucked, right? The benefit here is that Apple is known to choose quality over cheap shit. So if you bet on a company that is known for the best product, I think it's easier for you to choose a winner in this circumstance. I mean, this is why I'm betting on Validine. With the phone-based technology, I think Lumentum is probably the safest bet. But the fact is, the other two companies have very, very deep pockets. They all make a ton of money already. So it's a little bit more blurry. This is why I'm only betting on Validine at this time. But this is also why we have the 11 Collective, right? If you know something, please share with the community. If you have a hypothesis, please share with the community. You know, the thing with Validine is that you know, I was telling a lot of my friends that they should be investing in Validine when it was trying to SPAC. 
And uh, yeah, so I never had the opportunity to make that video. The company is worth a lot more now, obviously, but I still think there's a lot of upsides here. Automated driving, brand new industry. A lot of money to be had here once the entire car industry moved towards that direction. And that, in my opinion, is inevitable and perhaps will be sooner than electric cars. I think that self-driving capabilities can potentially be an add-on to old cars. And that is not something you can do easily, converting a fuel car to an electric car. But adding technology for self-driving capabilities, that's much easier. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave me a comment, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I have plenty of other awesome things to talk about. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to working with you next time. Thank you.